and what is going on everybody? It's a real bro here and today I'm bringing you a guide on how to do Fasani's Nightmare if you suck at this game like me. There's no denying it, Fasani's Nightmare is one of the hardest challenges in old school RuneScape. But if I can do it with ping like this, my terrible mechanical comprehension of the game, and my inability to calmly switch prayers without frantically moving the mouse around like a madman, then so can you. Now I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you that this was an easy breezy experience for me. It took me way too many deaths and way too many times of making really simple mistakes before I was finally able to get my first KC. And this video is going to serve as kind of a way to help you guys alleviate those same mistakes yourself. Fasani's Nightmare is basically just a scaled up version of the normal Nightmare. You do need at least one normal Nightmare KC before you're allowed to take on Fasani's. But you can just go to the mass world and get one in if you really just want to start doing Fasani's right off the bat. I do recommend doing at least 10-15 normal nightmare runs so you can learn her basic mechanics before you go into Fasani's nightmare. But to each his own, if you want to just go in raw dogging it, that's all you. So first things first, let's talk stats. Fasani's nightmare is going to be super hard for you if you don't have at least base 90s in your combats. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do it with worse combat stats than that because people have done it before, but it's going to take you longer, and the longer that you're in there, the more time you have to make a mistake. So, you know, take what you want from that. On the other hand, I'm definitely not saying that you need to be on a maxed account to take this on. I kind of get tired of people saying that, oh, the hardest content in the game should only be done by people with maxed accounts. I like PVM. That's my thing. And if you like PVM too, then do what you enjoy doing. Don't ever let anybody tell you how to play the game, because the best thing about RuneScape is you can do whatever you want, and if it's not the most efficient way of doing things, whatever, you're having fun. And it doesn't matter if it takes you 15 minutes to get a kill here. Getting a kill is getting a kill. It's impressive whether you do it in 15 minutes or 9 minutes. So don't let somebody with a scythe and full inquisitors talk down to you just because they've played the game for longer. You do you. Now let's talk about the weapons that you should be using to take on this challenge. I would like to make a disclaimer that the Scythe of Viter and the Inquisitor's Mace are best in slot here. Ipso facto, if you suck at this game, I'm gonna assume you don't have half of a billion gold to spend on one of those weapons. So let's talk about slightly cheaper options that you can use. And in order of best to worst, those three options that I'm gonna recommend you use are the Abyssal Bludgeon, the Seracnus Cudgel, and the Dragon Mace. The armor that you're going to want to wear is whatever your best strength boosting gear is. If you can't afford full bandos, then, you know, use whatever your best armor is. Wearing full bandos, having the Berserker Ring Eye, Amulet of Torture, all that jazz just makes it a little bit easier. But definitely it is not impossible to do with worse gear. Mythical Cape does beat Fire Cape here if you do not have the Infernal Cape unlocked. Which, again, if you suck at this game, I'm making an assumption here. Again, I could be wrong. Or you could be a credit card warrior, you know. I don't know what's going on with you in your life. What I do know is that that plus five extra crush bonus that the Mythical Cape gives you comes in handy at Fasani's. Another great alternative that you can make is bringing an Amulet of Blood Fury instead of an Amulet of Torture. The Amulet of Blood Fury has a 20% chance to heal you for 30% of the damage that you deal, and that can come in handy whenever you miss a prayer switch or walk under a grasping claw. Because let's keep it real here, neither you nor I as Wooks, we're not going to walk in here and do it perfectly our first time. So plan for those mistakes. You're also going to need to bring a magic weapon and magic damage boosting gear if you have it. There's literally zero purpose in bringing magic attack boosting gear because the totems are like a guaranteed hit or something. I don't necessarily know the mechanic, but there's no point in bringing it. My personal recommendations are either the Trident of the Swamp or Trident of the Seas. Since they're a powered staff, you don't need to bring a rune pouch, and that'll save you an inventory slot. Again, Sanguinesti staff is the best in slot here, but I'm making a bold assumption that you don't have the GP to purchase that just yet. As for the magic damage boosting gear, definitely do a DPS calculation to make sure that whatever you're bringing raises your max hit. If it does, it is worth bringing because it will speed up the fight. And speeding up the fight is very important because the longer that the fight takes, the more resources you're going to eat through. And that's a great way to seg you into our next topic, your inventory setup. My first tip is kind of a weird one, but it is strictly oriented for players who are still trying to learn Fasani's Nightmare or who aren't confident that they're going to get the kill. 
And that tip is to bank whatever teleportation method you're using. Whether you use the Draken's medallion, the echo file, drop it off in the bank before you run to sleep. That way you'll have one extra inventory space. And that one extra inventory space might be the difference between you getting the KC or not. And remember, if you do get it, when you get that Inquisitor's Great Helm drop, just use the Lumbridge Helm Teleport. Easy peasy. And if you don't get the KC, you get a free teleport to Lumbridge anyways. So it's a win-win. Once you start getting more confident, then you can start bringing those teleportation methods. Again, that's just something that I do. Your mileage may vary. Maybe you want to bring some home teleport tabs. Whatever, waste inventory space. Don't listen to my advice. It's okay. Up above, you'll see a few different inventory possibilities that you can roll with. For healing, you'll see the usual suspects. There's combo, food, Ceridoma brews, and super restores. It's whatever your preference is. The toxic blowpipe you're going to need for the sleepwalkers in the transition phases. The G-Maul with the ornate handle is what I use for a spec weapon during the last phase. If you have dragon claws, those are better, but again, I'm assuming you don't. Also bring a god sword or an elder maul if your max hit is 55 or over. When you drink the Sandfew Serum, it weakens the parasite. When you hit it with the god sword on crush, it guarantees an instant max hit, so it should be a one hit. If your max hit isn't 55 or if you don't want to fiddle with doing another switch during the fight, just bring another piece of food. It'll come in handy during the last phase. All right. So now it's time to talk about the fight itself. We're going to start with the Nightmare's standard attacks. They're the exact same as the normal Nightmare, but I'm going to throw them up on the screen for you to take a look at. You should also listen for the sound that it makes when she attacks, because those are very identifiable and they can help you to change your prayer if you can't see her when she starts that movement. Okay, so I'm going to play each style up above now. Now remember, whenever you see her begin that attack or whenever you hear that noise, whichever one your mind goes to first, your first instinct should be to switch your prayer. If you watched my guide on how to do the Corrupted Gauntlet, you might remember that I recommended you set up hotkeys for your prayer tab. I would definitely, definitely do that if you haven't done it already. Not having to click between your inventory and your prayer tab will save you a lot of mouse movement and will make your prayer switches a lot quicker. If you're struggling against that melee attack, because it is faster than the ranged and magic attack, try just hovering your mouse over protect from melee for the duration of the fight. Having it right there in place will make it a little bit easier to switch to it when that sudden strike comes your way. Praying against the wrong thing can cause you to take a devastating amount of damage, so I highly, highly suggest you memorize those sounds and memorize those patterns that she makes so that you can switch as fast as possible and give yourself a little bit of wiggle room in case you click the wrong thing. As for the special attacks, she does the exact same special attacks that she does in the normal Nightmare. The only difference is they are not limited to a specific phase. She will do them throughout the duration of the fight other than in the fifth phase, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now I'll talk more about all those special attacks here in a minute, for now I want to talk about the special attacks that I didn't get clips of because the guy that I was spectating was just too good. So the first special attack is Curse, which is what's happening on the screen right about now. In essence, Curse just switches all of your prayers one to the left. When you click on Protect from Melee, you will actually be protecting from magic. When you click on Protect from Magic, you will actually be protecting against missiles. When you click on Protect from Missiles, you will actually be protecting against melee. It's pretty simple once you get it down. The next special attack, which I do not have a clip of unfortunately, is what I like to call the Lamborghini Dash. That is where she teleports to one of nine locations across the room and surges across to the other side. If you're standing in her path when she makes that surge, you take a ridiculous amount of damage. It's fairly easy, it's one of the easier special attacks to defend against, you just have to move out of the way. The last one that I don't really have a clip of per se isn't really a special attack, it's more of just something to keep in mind, it's an effect that Fasani's Nightmare has. 
during the fourth phase, if you are praying against the attack that she is going to use before she begins it, she will turn your prayer off. You have to remember to pay attention to your prayer and make sure it's active. Because if she turns it off and she hits you, buddy, you're going to win a free trip back to Lumbridge. So for the flower power special attack, which is what you're seeing above, every time she does it, it will immediately be followed by five grasping claws, unless you end the phase like I just did right there. One trick to remember for the extended grasping claws when there's five of them in a row is to remember that there will always be a cluster immediately where you're standing, but it will be less dense further away from you. So if you click away from you before you can see where those portals are going to spawn, you might have a better chance of initially clicking on somewhere where a portal isn't going to be, which will save you a click. Now she will also do the extended grasping claws every time that she does the spores special attack. The only difference here is that if you walk within one tile of the spores, you're going to be slowed down for about 30 seconds, your attack speed is going to be slower, your run is going to be turned off and you can't re-enable it, in addition to as well as you will drain seven prayer points every time you yawn. So uh, yeah, make sure you don't walk within one tile of those if you can help it. Now all the other special attacks are the exact same as the normal nightmare fight, so I don't want to spend too long talking about them. One thing that is different is the husks and the parasite alternate phases. So if you start the fight with husks, the next phase will be parasites, then husks, then parasites. In addition to as well as, your crush weapon will always do its max hit against these. Only against the parasite if you remember to drink your Sandview Serum, but if you forget to drink your Sandview Serum, like a lot of things here, you're going to win a trip back to Lumbridge. The last thing that I want to mention before I start getting into my tips for surviving the fight is that during the transition phases, the sleepwalkers you have to be quick about. The easiest way to do it is to look for the XP drop. As soon as you click on a sleepwalker, wait for the XP drop and then immediately click on the next one. If you don't get all of them every time, you're going to take some damage. If you get all of them every time, you'll only take 5 damage. Now, to be completely honest with you, I still, to date, have not yet gotten all four of them during the fourth phase. I just am not fast enough, I admit it. I always eat up before that phase starts so that if I take a ridiculous amount of damage, I can survive it. It is what it is. So now, let's talk about the juiciest thing in this entire video. Surviving the fight. My tips and tricks for players who suck at OSRS, like me. So for the first tip, I'm going to say try to use the totems during the transition phase as a safe spot to prevent the nightmare from being able to use her melee attack against you. If you do it correctly, you'll only have to pray against magic and ranged. I do this by running to one side of the totem and going to the corner first, and then moving to the next so that the nightmare positions herself on the opposite side of that totem from me. My next tip is going to be that if you do take damage, try to heal up to at least 80 health as fast as possible after taking that damage so that you have a better chance of surviving another hit if you make a mistake. This third tip only applies if you're using Ruin Light or another third party client, but turn on NPC indicators and highlight the Nightmare and her sleepwalkers. This will make it much easier to see them when they spawn which will allow you to react much quicker. You should also turn on tile indicators and make sure that your true tile indicator is on. This will make it much easier to understand your pathing during the grasping claws, and it will always show the true position of where your character is registered on the server side. The last tip that I'll give you before I get into my priority list of what to pay attention to during the fight is during the extended claws special attack, which again always happens during the flower phase and spore attacks. Turn your prayers off. There's no point in wasting your prayer points when you don't need to. She will not do her standard attacks during these special attacks. So, everything in the nightmare is deadly. We already know this. But this is kind of my priority list for what you should pay the most attention to during the fight to ensure you have the best chance of surviving the encounter. Your first and most important priority to pay attention to throughout the entire fight is that you are praying correctly. If you pray against the wrong thing, you're gonna have a bad time. Next priority is movement during the Grasping Claws. Do not prioritize dealing out damage over moving to a safe spot. If you think that you can deal damage while the Grasping Claws are going, go for it. There is the corner trick, but if you suck at OSRS, I'm not going to get into that in this video. Next is being quick with those sleepwalkers. Like I said before, if you don't get them all, you're going to take some damage. 
One gets in, you're going to take an average of 40 damage. And an additional sleepwalker spawns during each phase. So first phase ends with one sleepwalker, second phase ends with two, so on and so forth. The last priority that I'm going to talk about is a spicy one. A lot of people may disagree with me, but this is my video, so get over it. DPS should be your last priority if you suck at OSRs. If you need to move to a safe spot, if you need to heal up, if you need to do anything else, do not prioritize dealing out damage over surviving the fight. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how quick you did it, doesn't matter how efficient you did it, if you didn't get the kill, you don't get those sick drops like 23 unnoted bass. But otherwise, the last tip that I want to give is during the fifth phase, it is a straight DPS check. She will do the extended grasping claws the entire time. If you constantly move to a different side of her, that is, if you're at the north side, go to the west side. If you're at the west side, go to the south side. You give yourself the best chance of not standing where a portal is going to spawn. So long as you keep doing that, you can keep dishing out damage. Because each of those sleepwalkers that reaches her is going to deal 15 damage to you. And you can only take so many of those before you run out of supplies. So keep moving around. Keep smacking her. That's all you got to do. Because at the end of the day, if you smack her down to zero before she smacks you down to zero, you've won. And you get that sick 1 in 200 chance of getting something worth a ridiculous amount of money. I unfortunately have not had that happen yet. And I'm currently down a lot of gold from trying to make this video. But that's not the point. The point is do not beat yourself up if you don't get it in so many tries. This boss is ridiculously hard. And just remember that every time you die it's a lesson learned. There's no reason not to be confident in yourself. And that's where I'm going to go ahead and wrap the video up here. If there's any other tips or tricks that you have that you think other people might find useful, feel free to comment them below. I always appreciate getting feedback on my videos, and I'd like to know if I left something out. If you did like the video, or if you found it helpful, consider clicking the like button. Maybe subscribe to my channel. You know, I like putting out content. I've had a lot of fun making these videos over the past few weeks. If you like seeing them, if you subscribe, that lets me know it's worth continuing. I've got a couple of ideas floating around my head right now. I'm thinking about doing a series on combat achievements for people who suck at OSRS. I've also been considering doing a longer guide on something like Chambers of Zerg. If that's something that you want to see, let me know. Other than that, have a good one.